so we have used different http verbs for different crud operation in our application we have not yet implemented an update operation uh, there are two uh, different http verbs http port and http patch uh, that can be used uh, to update the resources in web api i have interviewed a lot of uh, developers but most of those developers had no clear understanding of http patch uh, why to use uh, one over another and how to use http patch in dotnet core at all in this video uh, we will understand both of these uh, verbs in detail and then we will implement the same in our application next So from this mapping, it is not surprising that most people think uh, that put and patch uh, do the same thing. But in actuality, um, put and patch uh, might be doing the same thing of updating a resource at a location, but they uh, do it differently. Put replace the entire resource, uh, while patch specifies only the changes. For example, if we are a housing construction company and we need to replace uh, doors and windows in a house put method will send a complete house and replace the entire house put is similar to post in that it can create resources but it overwrite the entire resource uh, if it already exist and create a new resource if it doesn't exist unlike put patch apply a partial update to the resource it means uh, that you are only required to send the component that you want to replace and it won't affect or change anything else. However, uh, you should note that calling HTTP patch on a resource that does not exist is bound to fail and no resource will be created because it doesn't make any sense to put a door and a window where no house exists. So put method is particularly uh, useful for major updates, but if partial update is needed, patch method wins over put because it has to send less payload over the wire and it saves uh, bandwidth and uh, improve the performance of our application. So now you understand the difference between both. Let's implement an update operation in our city controller to update the city using HTTP put method next. At present, we only have a name field in this uh, city entity that we can update. Let's add one more field a uh, country as well here uh, so that we can understand the example. Although we should not directly use country name here, instead we should have another entity uh, named country and here uh, we should use the country ID to avoid data redundancy. We'll come back to this entity uh, later in this course and uh, normalize things. But let's keep it simple for a while uh, to understand this put and patch example. Let's add this field in CTDTO as well. As new property is added in entity, we will have to add a new migration. Let's name it add country column. Build field. It is strange that sometime application runs uh, successfully without any problem, but this command gives error uh, without much information. Let's run this command using a no build flag for now. I will dig into detail uh, later and uh, let you know if I find uh, something about it. So it's done. Run database uh, update command to update the underlying database table. Check if new uh, field is added. Yep, this new column is added in a city table. Let's run a test using postman and uh, try to run this get method. Perfect, we started to get new field in the get method as well. Let's try to add new city with country field as well. And request is successful. Let's check it in database. Yup, a new city is added with country detail as well. So there is no issue in existing methods, uh, all behaving uh, correctly. Let's add a method in controller to update an existing city. Let's borrow this line from add city method and rename the method name to update city. 
annotate it with HTTP put attribute and uh, define the URL to look something like this where ID will be the city ID uh, that is to be modified. It should be an input parameter that will come from the endpoint URL add ID in this method. So in order to modify the city, uh, first we need to get the city from the database on the base of this ID that the user wants to modify. Let's add a method to find a city on the base of ID in city repository. So first of all, we need to add the signature in interface. Uh, it should be a task and return the city as type name it find city. And this method should accept an ID as a parameter. Next, we need to implement this method in city repository. We can add this method manually here or we can put the cursor here and press the control dot and select this implement interface. And here in this method, we can return the city on the base of ID. I use data context uh, dot cities dot find async method and pass the ID here uh, to return the city if available in the database. It's returning error uh, because we are using await and uh, this method should be marked as asynchronous. Now we can uh, use it in our update city method in city controller. Let's fetch the same in a variable and name it city from db and fetch the same uh, using unit of work dot city repository dot find city method that we just have added pass id here uh, that we are receiving from the client and similar to the post method we need to set last updated by and last updated on here in controller only and as we need to map all the properties uh, we are receiving from the client uh, to this city from db object we can use mapper.map and we can pass the source and destination in this method. So source is city DTO and destination is city from DB. Now we can call save async method to update the changes in database and return status code 200 as success message to the caller. Let's test the method using postman and try to update country of Atlanta. Add a new tab to call the newly added endpoint. Borrow this URL from post method and change it to update slash and the ID of the city that we want to modify. So ID of Atlanta is 1. Select put here, uh, body is row and type is JSON. Add the properties in JSON format that our DTO accepts. As it is put method, we need to send all the properties uh, even though we just need to update the country in this row. Uh, press send. Request is successful. Let's check it in database. Yep, it's updated. So at present we only have two fields and it is not a big deal to pass the additional field in request payload but it may become a problem in a bigger form where we may have lot of fields and the put method is not suitable for such partial updates inherently. Let's see what will happen if we remove the name field from JSON and submit the request. You can see it sets name as null and if we remove country from this list country will set as null. So we can use HTTP patch for partial updates. Let's see how to do that next. So from .NET Core 3.1 system.text.json was added in runtime. Uh, which has become the default for JSON serialization and deserialization. This was introduced primarily to focus on performance, security and standard compliance. But unfortunately, it does not support JSON patch formatter. 
and if we want to use the patch method in dotnet core we'll have to still depend on newton soft json package so let's add this package from nuget package manager that is microsoft.aspnet core.mvc.newton soft json make sure to spell it correctly let's select the 3.1.8 version that is compatible for our framework restore the package and in order to use it we will have to add it in configure service method in startup.cs file now we can add another method uh, for updating that can use http patch to update the city let's copy this put method and make the required changes to convert it to http patch method and update it to http patch let's rename it to update city patch and http patch method should accept json patch document uh, it is a generic type and we can pass city dto here let's use city type only uh, here instead of dto now we can use the apply to method of json patch document and pass the object name and that is to be patched and here in our case it is city from db that we want to update and the second parameter is an optional one and we can pass model state here uh, with this option uh, we can get the error message in response if model state is not valid that's it our patch method is ready to use now let's see how to test it add a new tab uh, to test this patch request same here select row and json type and body of this patch is not the one uh, you have seen in our previous methods as we are using json patch document as input parameter in this method it should be an array of multiple json objects uh, where we need to tell what operation uh, need to be performed patch document supports multiple operations uh, so we are only interested in replace at present so we will use replace as operation here then we need to tell uh, what is the path uh, that is to be replaced so it should be the field name uh, that we want to update let's update the name field and third one is the value that is to be replaced let's change atlanta to atlanta new submit the request it's successful let's check it in the database yup name is updated successfully let's try to update country this time perfect only country is updated and there is no impact on name we can also update multiple fields by adding multiple json objects like this So this is how you can use put and patch in .NET Core with the Entity Framework. So now it is time for Climax. Uh, you must be thinking that we will be using HTTP patch method for all partial updates. But no, we are not going to use HTTP patch at all in our application. Let me tell you the reason that why I do not prefer to use HTTP patch with .NET Core. And first reason is that .NET Core is moving away from Newtonsoft.json dependency and introduced its own implementation system.text.json uh, for a few reasons like for better performance, security and standard compliance. And if we use Newtonsoft.json, we will somewhere compromising with performance and security of our application. I was thinking that Microsoft will upgrade system.text.json namespace uh, to support JSON patch in upcoming versions, but they do not even upgrade the same in .NET 5 as well. And also they do not have any plan to upgrade it uh, in upcoming versions uh, for the reasons uh, that this will require a huge investment from them with not a very high value add for majority of their customer. And it is a little disappointing for me. Although Microsoft have introduced a work around uh, to use only JSON patch without overwriting formatter for other HTTP methods, 
as per this article but still i do not prefer to use http patch because it provides a lot of flexibility to the api client and any flexibility is good thing as long as it is not misused but we do not have any control over the user of our api and any clever user can manipulate the request as per their needs as they have flexibility to select the operation uh, they want to perform on a resource so because of these reasons uh, we are not using http patch at all in our application and we will use http put for all updates we can still use partial updates uh, using http put only but we end up writing more dto and multiple endpoints for different kinds of updates but it is better to write more code instead of compromising with security and performance of our application let me show you how we can use multiple dto's and endpoints for different kinds of updates uh, for example suppose we want to set up an endpoint uh, to update only name on city entity uh, we can define another dto and keep only name property in that let's add the same in mapper profile and copy this http put update city method and use city update dto here and test it so this method should pass only name in body or uh, not country and uh, controller should update only the name in the database submit the request getting error saying request matched multiple endpoints matches yep seems i forgot to change the endpoint let's change it to update city name It's updated successfully now check it in database perfect we have been able to update only city name and country name is not updated so hope you understood what is the purpose of these two different http verbs and when to use one over another and how we can use http put only for partial updates as well we have not yet handled any error in our api for example a user can pass the id that even does not exist in the system and our api throw an exception to the user with a lot of details user can use a string value as well here in id parameter but our api is not giving proper error to the user we'll see how to handle various types of error in our next lesson so stay tuned see you in next video tata bye bye